All right, everybody. I'm making a video here for my buddy Jordan. He uh, wants to build some fencing, and visual aids usually help everybody out. So, Jordan, build your perimeter fence, high tensile wire. Set good corner posts, use the tensioners and the springs, two to three strands on your perimeter, you're golden. Get a good fencer, go down and buy it. I'll show you my fencer. I have a 200 mile fencer. The 100 mile fencer for your situation will be plenty. Get a good fencer that's nice and strong. They touch it once or twice. They'll never touch it again. Now, on your dividers, this is where the issue is. On your dividers, do not build permanent dividers. Get the poly rope. Nine strand stainless steel wire. This stuff lasts a very long time. If you compare this, what I'm going to show you, all this equipment, to making hay, this is by far cheaper. 1,320 foot roll is right around $50, $60. There are 600 feet on this one extension cord reel. I sent you the link to these non-conductive handles, 89 cents a piece. Buy 10 of them. Buy your poly wire. Go out to your fence after it's built. Find your longest run. Pull out all your wire on that longest run, give yourself an extra 50 feet. Cut it, tie it to the extension cord reel, reel it up. That way all your reels are long enough for your longest run, okay? Extension cord reels, anywhere from five to $10 a piece. Menards, Fleet Farm, Farmer Fleet, they all carry them. These are not UV stabilized, you get about five years out of them. You can paint them with paint, that extends their life a little, but they're cheap enough, I don't worry about it. When they break, I go buy a new one, I pull out the wire in the longest run, I unhook it, I hook it to the new one, I roll it back up. Don't worry about it. These handles, I've never had one break. So, poly wire for your dividers. Do not build anything permanent. As your herd size grows, you need to make bigger paddocks for your cattle. You can easily adjust the size of your paddocks with poly wire, okay? As your calves get bigger, they need a bigger area. You'll want that adjustability, okay? Extension cord reel, poly rope, non-conductive handles. I say non-conductive handles because you can leave your perimeter hot. You can undo this, hook it to your perimeter, pull it out to your other perimeter fence. You can loop your poly wire back through one of these holes Right? It's not hot right now because the handle is non-conductive. Loop it around the handle. You pull it tight. You set this down over top of your other perimeter. Now all of a sudden it's electrified. Okay? Then when you're done, you just grab the handle of this, which this isn't electrified because it's plastic. Take it off your perimeter. Now all of a sudden, you just take it back off the handle. You reel it up. Then you just take and stick this through. I have a I have a slot cut. Go through, stays nice. Throw it on the four-wheeler, throw it on your cart, whatever. Carry it with you to the next spot. Sell your farm. You leave the perimeter fence because the buyer who buys your place is probably going to want that perimeter fence for their horse. These are not permanent. They go with you. This investment is like a tractor. You're probably not going to leave your tractor there when you sell the farm. You're not going to leave these either. These go with you to your next farm. Pigtail posts. These are about three to four dollars a piece. Easy to set in the ground. Easy to pull out of the ground. When you sell the farm, you throw them on the back of the pickup. You go to your next place. They go with you. I have never had to replace one of these yet. They can get bent. You bend them back. Um, you know if. I think I have 30 of these, but say you need 100 of them, it's 400 bucks. That's not that expensive. You're not going to need that many, but I would buy these instead of T-posts for your divider fences. Now, distance on these depends on terrain. If you have flat ground, you can put 50 feet between these pigtail posts. Your poly wire is going to be tight because it's going to be hooked over your um, high tensile wire at the ends. So 
you don't need a lot of these. It all depends on your train. If you have whoop de woos you're going to need more. If you have flat ground, you're going to need less. But I would buy pigtail posts. When you sell your farm, you take these with you, along with your reels. It's a one-time investment. These, I would put a five-year life expectancy on them. I have some that are nearing 10 years old. If you bring these in in the wintertime, when you're not using them, they will last a lot longer. So, poly wire rope, extension cord reel, non-conductive handle, pigtail posts. Okay, let's say you have a square pasture. Say your shed is over here. Say you divide it in half because you're trying to get so you have a 30 day rest period in each paddock. So, say your shed's here, you're going to graze this first strip to get to the north. And say you have your, your, your pasture is like this. You're going to divide it east to west this way with one strand of high tensile wire down the center. That's hot, okay? And your perimeter fence is three strands, let's say. Well, you're going to use a poly wire to run a strand up from your shed. The cattle can graze this first little strip on the south half, then day number two or three, whatever it's going to be. You really don't want them in a paddock longer than three days. Now, to move them to the north side, you've got that single strand of high tensile wire, right? That's where the riser comes into play. Use pin lock insulators on your T-posts. You can pull that pin lock out, take your high tensile wire, hook it in the slot on top of your riser, lift it up, set this on top of your T-posts, all of a sudden you have a gate. You can push the cattle underneath here to the north side. Once they're done, you take this back off, hook your high tensile wire back to the insulator, you're golden. All this is a three or four foot four foot piece of PVC two inch I have a bolt stuck through it right there you slide that over the t-post that bolt keeps it so it can only go down that far on the t-post okay what is this five dollars right here here's your gate this gate works everywhere okay if you have a lane let's say you're a dairy farm you have a lane that runs down the whole length of your pasture divides your pastures in half you use these to get your cows in and out of the paddocks into the lane every time they go back and forth. Called a riser. If you're going to subdivide or divide your pasture lengthways in half, this is a key component to getting them from one side to the other. So buy yourself a riser. Now the only place I use this anymore is from my dry lot or my cow yard to the fields right out here. Instead of my cows having to walk down that lane around the corner, I will set it out here so they have less travel to get to this front field, which was corn silage last year. The front part was hay, back was corn silage. So I use this as a gate for them to get to that pasture, okay? That's really the only place I use this anymore. Most of my pastures, I have to get a tractor in once in a while. I can't get the tractor through my lanes to get out to my pastures. What do I do? I've got one strand, two strands, whatever. I have a pasture down the road that if I want to get in there a fertilizer spread manure, what do I do? I loosen up my tensioners a little bit. On two T-posts, this T-post and the next one, I have the three insulators that hold the perimeter fence, and then I have a fourth insulator on the very bottom take to the ground. What I will do is I will undo all the pin locks, take the all three of the wires, push them down to the insulator on the ground, hook them in there, so now all of a sudden the wire is tight to the ground, I can drive over it anywhere. I have a gate wherever I want. That works with four strands, that works with one strand. I would not go and put any more gates in than you absolutely have to. It's just the less gates you have, the less joints you have, the less issues you will have with things shorting out, things breaking. So here is if you want to get your cattle through, use a riser, they go under the wire. A lot of cattle will not step over that fence, even if it's tight to the ground. They see it and they just won't go. Put this over, once they get trained to going underneath it, it's not an issue. Okay? Now, I'm sure you're going to want at least one gate to get into your pasture. If I didn't have a lane dividing my fields, I wouldn't have gates at all. What I use for, wire, for electric gates is poly rope. Poly rope. You're gonna have to bear with the fan running. It's 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 minus 14 outside, so the fan's running for the heat. Use poly wire for your electric gates. If you take a brand new roll 
You take your loose end, you, you tie it to your insulator on your post, pull this all the way across, string it out, hook it to your um, post at the other side so you get your length right, then run it back to where you started. Cut the rope, tie the two ends together, hook them in your far insulator. That insulator is not hooked to anything, it's just a dead end. Then as you pull your poly rope so they're equal, tie a knot in them in two or three places so they stay together. It's just You're doubling up the poly rope. Then at the far end, you stick it in your gate handle, but you do not use a non-conductive, you use a conductive. So it has the wire that runs, or the metal that runs all the way through, you hook it to the... What I do is at the far end, I will hook it on a wire. Or your post wrap, you'll have that little loop there where your spring hooks to. Hook this to that. It can't slide back and forth. It's hooked. Now all of a sudden your gate is electrified, right? And what you can do, say you tie a knot three feet from the end, you take your loop, you stick it through the hole on the, on the handle, pull it up and over and pull it back and it just hooks back to itself. You don't actually have to tie this. Now I have a knot in there and if the knot's not too big you can slide it back through the hole and I can easily take this handle off without having to cut the poly wire. Okay, I would make my gates out of that. And the reason I do it that way, this does not have a memory. You can unhook this gate, handle, drop the rope right to the ground and it lays flat on the ground. You don't have to worry about driving over with the baler and catching with the pickup teeth or enough because it's laying flat. Or you can take this and pull it around the side so you don't drive over it. It's gonna lay nice and flat on the ground. Wire has memory, it's always gonna wanna curl up. Then you go to grab it, you pull it out, it gets a knot in it, then the next thing you know it breaks. When you're not home, the, all of a sudden the wire breaks, come home and you got calves running around the yard. Use this. Um, also, the reason for having it so it's dead when it's unhooked, when it's laying on the ground, it's not snapping. It's not using power to fight. It's short when it's laying on the ground. And if you're going to run cattle through that gate opening, if this is laying on the ground snapping, whether it be poly rope, um, wire fence, whatever, if it's snapping on the ground, the cattle get nervous around it and they're not going to want to go. If you have this, my idea, where when you unhook it, it's dead, and you use this, you can pull it out of the way. Number one, you can pull this around the corner, they don't see it, they don't have to step over it, they're more apt to go through the opening. And it's just, it works much better. So I would go with that for your gate, your electric gate, where you're going to want to put one or two. I would use this for those as well. Um, get a very, get a good fence charger, get a 100 mile or a 200 mile, I have a 200 mile 15 joule outlet or output. The animals touch it once or twice, they will never touch it again. Once they touch this poly rope and know that it's hot, they won't challenge it again. It's You got to have a good fencer. Don't cheap out, buy the $100 one, buy the $300 one, buy the highest output you can afford. I have two 200 mile fencers and then I have that cheap Parmark or Parmac whatever you call it 30 mile as a backup in case something happens to one of my other two which I have one that needs to go to the re to the guy to get rebuilt now <clears throat> but get a good fence charger but do as much as you can in temporary you gotta have a good solid perimeter high tensile there that's gonna be an investment but that's also gonna make your property worth more the next person that looks at your property is probably going to want horses. So if you build a good fence for your perimeter, it's going to add value to your property. But your, your internal fencing, your temporary fencing, use this stuff because this isn't going to matter to the next person. Your temporary stuff is an investment for you. You take that with you when you go. So that is what I would do. On your perimeter, I only have two strands on all of mine, except for along the road I've got three. A lot of my stuff here between the fields and the pasture, I only have a single strand and I don't have issues with cattle getting out. So for you, with going to be raising Holsteins, I would just say three strand perimeter and then your interior temporary, just use poly rope. You can adjust it however you need it because throughout the summer, your daily paddocks are going to grow. When you first start, they're going to be small. As the calves get bigger, their daily needs are going to get bigger, so you're going to need bigger paddocks every day. I would not use steel wire or aluminum wire for your interior fencing because you're going to build it for today, and tomorrow it's going to be obsolete. You're going to need to adjust it, and you're going to be very unhappy when you're pulling T-posts and 
twisting wire and that stuff is brittle and it breaks it's just get this right from the get-go trust me I'm trying to save you a lot of headache I learned the hard way now I will show you my fencer and how I have that set up um, but I'm also going to add right now quick with that you know you can divide down the center if you can take a square and divide it in half and take make two rectangles in it you're better off because then you can make a complete circle and down that center divider you can run black pipe above ground and you can just put joints in every so often say you have a hundred foot um, garden hose that you can use you put a Joe bend on one and Joe bends valves on your black plastic water line every 200 feet you can put a valve because you got a hundred foot um, garden hose so you got a 50 foot then you put your job valves every hundred foot that way you can hit everything down the center with a water line black plastic water line is cheap you can run water line a very long ways and then you only need a 25 gallon stock tank move it with you quick job valve plugs in and out during the winter time you just drain them all out and you're good to go um, but if you can make it so you can make a complete circle so they they end where they started it works the best so Hopefully that helps you out. I'll go show you the fencer and any more than that, you know how to get a hold of me. Now you can't see them, but there's three 12 foot long groaning rods on the north side of the garage. So they're in a damp location. One at that corner, one in the center, one at that end. Pwned in the ground 11 feet. You just use high tensile wire to connect them together, then it runs into the shed. Back to the fence charger. Okay. Brand new roll of high tensile wire, 90 bucks. I think the wife bought it on sale for 80. 4,000 foot roll. You can't build a fence for cheaper. All right, in here, as you will see, fence charger, 200 mile. If you can afford one, I recommend it, but the 100 mile works good too. Don't buy a cheap piece of junk like that. That right there is just my backup. So what I have on my power wire, this is an underground insulated wire. You got the storm guard. I run over here to the shut off. If I flip that, all the pasture is shut off. But as you can see right there, just jumped. That wire runs out and across to my steer lot. So my steer lot is always on. Okay. So I would use that to get out to your fence. Um, now my ground is just high tensile wire running here. It's not touching any steel of the building, so it's not going to short out on the fence, which technically it doesn't short out. That's just going to make a ground, but it can back feed through it. And if you touch the building, you can get a shock or your cattle. So I just have it running on wood with insulators where it makes bends, whatever. But I have two more of these shutoffs out there so I can shut off. Like, I can leave this one on, but I can go out there and shut that one off, and the other one in the horse pasture and the cow lot all stays hot, but then all the pasture shuts off. That's how I have mine set up. Um, if you're making the rest of your fence, I would not use aluminum jumper wires anywhere if you absolutely can not do it, because when you make your, your loops, you should be able to leave your tails long enough that they can hook to the next strand of wire, you crimp them, you have good solid connections, you don't have twisted wires that are junk. Um, twisted wires are not the right way to make connections in wiring. So post wraps, crimps, that's, that's how you do that for your jumps. And if you want to have an area that you can shut off, put a fence disconnect in there. So that is how you do that. Right there you can see there's the tensioners and the springs. Post wrap is around the post. You can't see the loops there, but there is a loop that runs from the bottom strand to the top strand connected, so it's a good solid joint. And the insulated wire that runs out to here is crimped to that. It is not twisted. You crimp it. You do not twist. You crimp. So that is how that is done. And on the riser, what I was telling you about, out here at the far end of the cow pasture, the dry lot here, that T-post right there, I unhook the high tensile wire, set the riser on top with the 
with the wire in the riser and the cows can go underneath that post to get out to that pasture or that field but I can put that anywhere so I hope you find that helpful and informative in your uh, quest here to build your fence so any more questions like I say you know how to get a hold of me but anyhow that's what things are looking like here my shed's still standing so far we got another big storm coming so anyways yep thanks for watching everybody